Hello. Hello, darling. It's your mother here from across the other side of the world. How are you, dear? Mum, you only live a couple of hours' drive away. Oh, do I? Well, you wouldn't think so with the amount of times you visit me. I was only saying to the new butler yesterday how long it's been since you and... and uh, what's her name and the children last came to visit. Mum, her name is Barbara, and we were there for your birthday. Really? Which birthday was that? So, Mum, how are you? What does she want now? Put it on speakerphone. Oh, not bad. Not good, but not bad. I've got some aches and pains, but what's a mother for but to suffer? Just because she's got a pain doesn't mean she needs to be one. But I was just wondering, darling, with Christmas coming soon, how about spending it with your dear old mother? We could sing carols around the piano, just like old times. Mum, we never had a piano, and you can't play? Yes, I know, but you can. No, I can't. Yes, you can. Remember I bought you that little piano for your fifth birthday? Mum, I already told you we won't be around for Christmas this year. Barb's headed for Queensland. The kids are staying at friends and, well, I'm going on that fishing trip, remember? Uh, no, I don't remember that at all. Oh, Mum, you're so absent-minded. Am I? Funny, I don't remember being absent-minded. Whole grains of few fries short of a Happy Meal. Yeah. <laughs> Mum, we'd love to spend Christmas with you, but we've already made plans. So when was the last time we actually spent Christmas together as a family with a Christmas tree and presents and a navity scene? Mum, don't start, please. We don't do that anymore. What? No celebration and presents for the kiddies? Well, Mum, we don't have time, and, and the kiddies... Our teenagers, we just give them money. Money can't buy them love, dear. What about the whole meaning of Christmas? We used to have such wonderful times together when your father was still alive. Well, that was a long time ago, Mum. We don't have time for that sort of stuff anymore. Well, dear, I just thought... I was seeing it could be our last Christmas together. Is there something you're not telling me, Mum? There could be. You're not dying, Mum. Aren't I? Well, have you seen the doctor lately? No, why? What's the matter with him? <sighs> Nothing. But you are well, aren't you? Well, as well as could be expected for someone in my fragile condition. And what condition is that? Uh, old age. So you're not dying, Mum? Aren't we all dying from the moment we're born? Oh, Mum. Harold, it's very important that you all come this Christmas. I've got something I want to share with you. It's our inheritance! Finally! Yes, yes, yes! Fleur, let's not jump to conclusions. What's going on? I think Gran's dying and she wants to give us our inheritance. Really? Yeah. Fantastic! Well, she hasn't got many years left in her anyway. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, mum, my way. From there's, there's a reader read happiness, happiness today. today. Uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh. Wait till I tell my friend. Shh. Mum, is it really that important? I mean, it'd mean we'd have to change all our plans. Ed was going to do something special with you, wasn't he? Now that he's back from England. I mean, he lives in Sydney now and he was going to fly you up, wasn't he? Was he? I'm not speaking to Edward at the moment. Well, why not? Because he's not here, silly. Anyway, he's going to change his plans. He's going to what? Oh, Harold, you're hearing like I sound. I said he's changing his plans. He's changing his plans? He can't do that. Why not? Well, well, because... Because you'll be alone at Christmas. That's because you won't come down. Well, that's not my fault. I didn't say it was your fault. I'm just blaming you, that's all. Ask what it is that's so important. Mum, what is it that's so important that you want to share with us at Christmas? You'll just have to wait and see when you come. You were always an eager little beaver. I'll always remember the time mum, when you got mum, to... Mum, we're not coming. Well, that was a quick change of heart. No, Mum, we were never coming. So you were lying to your poor old dying mother. Mum, you're not dying. Aren't I? Look, maybe we could change the dates around. Harry, I am going to Noosa and that is it. 
Well, what was that Barb said? She wants to noose me. Hang me, does she? Well, tell her she might want to wait and see what I've got to share with you first. Just hang on a minute, Mum. Look, it might pay us to change the dates around. I'm concerned for Mum. She's not sounding normal. Does she ever? Mum, it's what we've been waiting for, our inheritance. Brooke is going to be so jealous. Oh, I'm going to start making a list of all the things I'm going to spend my money on. Yeah. Where's the Harvey Norman catalogue? Mum's right, Barb. Look, it could be our last Christmas together. Oh, I doubt it. She wouldn't let us off that easy. OK, Mum. If it's that important, we'll come. Mum? Mum? This better be about the inheritance, Harry, or I'm leaving. Either way, I'm the winner. You'll never find another woman like me. I should hope not. Mum? Mum? Are you there, Mum? Sorry, darling. I was just lost in thought. That should be unfamiliar territory for her. I was just going to be and what a precious time we'll have together. I think it's a room with a star in the view. Oh, you got last time, it's my turn. Campbell, there's ten rooms. It's a mansion. Just wait till we get there and I'm sure we'll be able to please you with something. Well, Mum, look, I'll put you on to Barb and you can sort out all the details with her. Harry, I'm not playing happy families. Think of the money then. Right. Well, there you go, Lily. You got your own way again. Well, you must be as happy as Larry. Who's Larry, dear? The money. We're gonna get the money. We're gonna get the money. She's probably forgotten we're even coming. Oh. Barb, she's probably putting the finishing touches together for our welcoming. Oh. You know, putting out food and stuff. Yeah, right, like home brand Mari biscuits. <laughs> I can't believe I let you do this to us. I was stupid when I married you. <laughs> yeah, I know you were. But I was in love and didn't notice. It's going to be so good without Ed being here. At least I'll get my fair share of the money and more this time. 20 years later and you still can't let it go, can you? Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> oh, here comes Uncle Ed with his phony English accent. <laughs> well, it's no different to Kylie Minogue's. <laughs> hey. Well, hello, hello. Good to see you all. Looks like we're having a happy family reunion. Ed, what are you doing here? I thought you changed your plans for Christmas. I did. That's why I'm here. I was going to fly Mum up to Sydney for a couple of days, but she said you changed your plans and were coming here, so she had to stay. Uh, but 
But we only changed our plans because you changed your plans. But I changed my plans after you changed your plans. Actually, we didn't change our plans, Harry. Your mother did. <sighs> she lied to you both again. Oh, come on, Bob. You know Mum's always if by honesty is the best policy. And now senility is her best defence. <laughs> oh, Mum's not senile. That mind wanders a bit, that's all. <laughs> Sometimes it leaves completely. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ed, why did you come if you knew we were coming? Oh, come on, Harry. You can't hold a grudge forever. We're brothers. Just watch me. So, why did you come, Uncle Ed? Well, your grandmother said she had something she wanted to share with me, which makes a change because your dad's always been her favourite. You'd probably come running from England with your tongue hanging out if you still lived there. So why are you here, then? Well, we think her time's nearly up. And... Well, we've given up a lot to be here for yeah. her in her time of yeah. need. Yeah. You mean your time of need? Well, I hope it's worth it. Oh, yeah, I hope it's not a false alarm. Yeah. Oh, come on, Grant. I told you not to go so fast. Oh, I wish you'd just make up your mind to oh, drive too fast. Oh. You drive too slow, you go left, you... I'll stop speeding. No, 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 no. <laughs> Philip, yes. I'm the new butler. <laughs> oh, he retired, sir. Uh, so where's Mum? I'm not sure, sir. I'll try and track. I'll try and locate her for you. Well, she probably doesn't know where she is either. <laughs> Must be tough on Mum not having on around. <laughs> he was almost part of furniture. She's probably already forgotten he existed. You don't still pick your nose, do you? Oh, don't worry, dear. One day I'm sure you'll find someone that's good-looking, intelligent and witty. Mm. Yeah, they say opposites attract, Ed. Uh, yes, dear. That's why you married this handsome, sweet man. Hello, hello Mum. Darling. How are you? And uh, hello, um, um, Mum. Oh, yes. I must remember that. It's sharp like barbed wire. <laughs> I'm a little forgetful on the names, but I never forget a face, though in your case, dear, I could make an exception. And hello, my dear! What is it again? It's something to do with soup, wasn't it? Vegetable. Yeah, no, great, great. It's Campbell. Oh, yes, that's right. Look at you! You look so much like your grandfather. William? <gasps> William! No, no, Graham, 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 it's Campbell, it's Campbell, Graham. Campbell. Oh, what's that, dear? Don't you think if God wanted you to have holes in your ears, he would have put them there? And there's my darling little flood. Uh, no, no, it's Flagran. Sounds like a brand of toilet spray. <laughs> Fleur. It's like trying to get a bad taste out of your mouth, isn't it? Mother, behave. Look at your bed. Belly. Your mother's still shrinking your clothes, Barbara. <laughs> While you're here, I'll give you some washing instructions. You poor little mind. No, Gran, it's the fashion. Oh, yes, dear. You just keep telling yourself that. Well, come on, everyone. Come and sit down. It's wonderful to see you all. Uh, oh, oh, mind the cat, dear. His name is Tom. He's such a good boy, aren't you? He always sits in your grandfather's chair. Well, at least it's still being used again. He's very precious to me, old Tom. He's a little stiff with arthritis, but he's such a good boy, aren't you, dear? Yes, you are. Uh, so, to what do I owe 
know this momentous occasion. Um, well, Mum, you invited us here for Christmas. Uh, did I? Yes, Mum. Is it nearly Christmas again? Did you know that, Arnold? It's Philip, Madam oh. Philip. And yes, remember we went shopping for Christmas presents? Oh, yes. Yes, that's right, that's right. <clears throat> Mum, we brought you a present for having us. Oh. It's a painting Barb did. She's been having lessons. Oh, why, thank you, thank you. There you go, Arnold, thank you, dear. <clears throat> what is it, dear? It's supposed to be a picture of a mother and her child. Well, then why isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Arnold. Oh, the toilet walls are quite fair. (laughs) So, Grant, we came all the way from Melbourne because you said you had something you wanted to share with us. Oh, of course. You must be thirsty after your trip. Arnold, cordial would be lovely, thank you. And don't spare the water. Oh, it's lovely to see my boys again. You always got on so well. Not for the last 20 years, Mum. Oh, really? Doesn't time fly? I was just sitting and thinking the other day. Life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. (laughs) Thanks for that pearl of wisdom, Lily. That was very precious. Gran, have you noticed that the cat doesn't move? (laughs) Oh, well, dear, he's very old and stiff and he's a very deep sleeper. Gran, the cat's stuck. (laughs) Oh, I don't like to use language like that, Heinz. Tired is sufficient, thank you. Gran, does the cat eat? (laughs) Just drop it, Campbell. Oh, yes. Arnold puts food out for Tom every day. Don't you, Arnold? It's Philip, madam. He eats quite a bit for his age, doesn't he, Arnold? It's Philip, madam. Sometimes there's a little left over, but he generally eats the whole can, doesn't he, Arnold? Yes, madam. (laughs) But it's only John West tuna, though. Isn't that right, Arnold? So why the kitty litter, Gran? (laughs) Well, Flo, a cat's got to do what a cat's got to do, dear. So, Lily, now that you've managed to get us all here together, isn't there something important you want to tell us? Yes. Oh, look at you all. Aren't you sweet, giving me so much undivided attention? (laughs) I think I'll just sit and savour the moment. (sighs) Mum. We're waiting. (sighs) Houston, the vultures have landed. And you'll have to wait a little longer till Christmas morning. It's only four more sleeps. But shouldn't you tell us now, Lily? Um, Unburden yourself. Get it off your chest. Um, Let us help you with what you're going through. Am I going through something? For goodness sake, Lily. What you were saying earlier on the phone... Uh, was I going through something on the phone, dear? Oh, if you stood next to her, you'd hear the sea. She's being deliberately uncooperative, Harry. <clears throat> Let me have a go. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Mum, what was it that you always said to us that we had to be if we wanted to go to heaven? Dead? <laughs> no, Mum. Good? Oh, yes. And right now you're being uh, difficult? Oh, I don't mean to be. Let me deal with this. Look, Lily, are you dying or not? Oh, no, but thank you for asking. So you're not ill then, Mum? Oh, no, no, not at this moment, no. Oh. no. I could have been a noosa right now. But you have got something to share with us, haven't you, Gran? Yeah, something you want to give us. Something that'll really benefit us. <gasps> oh, yes, my dear. Oh, oh of course, you must be tired after your trip. 
Why don't I show you to your room so that you can relax and unpack before dinner? Great idea, Mum. Just gonna stop this interrogation. Oh, Gran, can I have the room with the spa this time? Oh, Thanks. Last time. Oh, I've got my knee. Um, uh, just pretend I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> Who was that? Oh, that was Barry, the painter. Painter? Uh, did I forget to tell you that all the upstairs rooms are being painted? Yes, Mum, I think you did. Why now, Lily? Where are we meant to sleep now? Oh, Barry's been extremely busy. He's doing me a special favour by fitting it in before Christmas. But not to worry, I'm letting you stay in my special place. It's part of my gift to you this Christmas. What are you talking about, Lily? Oh, it must be a new extension she's done. She's so rich. Well, come along, then. It's this way. Let's play follow the leader. Uh, we're following the leader, the leader, the leader. Let's do this, dears. Come along. The leader. We're following the leader. <sighs> Look, Harry, just a minute. If we're going to survive the ordeal of the next few days, well, we'd better decide to be nice to one another. Oh, really? Well, you're 20 years too late with this conversation. How about being nice to me 20 years ago when you got the car and the money and I got nothing? How about being nice to me when I came to the city after uni and needed a place to live? Oh, no. You were too busy for me then. Too busy spending Dad's money and gallivanting all over Europe. Look, I don't know why Dad just give, decided to give me the car and the money and you the family heirloom. Obviously, it had great significance to him. Yeah, a big leather Bible to travel the road of life with, as he put it. I would have rather travelled in a new sports car. Look, a car's not everything. Oh, come on, it gave you a good head start, didn't it? <laughs> anyway, you were always Dad's favourite and you know it. You want to talk about favourites? Do you see the way Mum was goo garring over you? Oh, hello, darling, sweetie, still as handsome as ever. What do I get? Hello, Edward, still picking your nose. I was eight, for goodness sake. Will she never let me forget it? The only reason Mum calls me sweetie and darling is because she can't remember my name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I wish I was her favourite. <laughs> then at least the inheritance would be looking good for me. Is that all you lot are here for? Money? Doesn't Mum mean more to you than money? Of course she does. But I want my fair share of the inheritance this time. <laughs> and while she's still with us, I'm going to make sure I get it. Look, Harry, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that money only buys one type of security. It's family, relationships... Oh, are... thank you for those words of wisdom, oh, why Ed. why do I bother? But I've never seen you not enjoying your money. Spending ten years in England, rubbing shoulders with the upper class certainly hasn't made you the worst for the wear. You done pretty well for yourself, Harry. <laughs> I'd give anything to the wife and family too. <laughs> Have mine for a while. You'll soon change your mind. <laughs> Harry, what's happened to you to make you so, well, bitter and twisted? Oh, don't start with that psychology stuff. Look, why didn't you just ask Dad that Christmas after you graduated why he didn't give you any money, huh? Look, I wasn't going to go grovelling. He'd made his decision. Well, you'll never know then, will you? Look, he was always cold and aloof. Even if he hadn't died three days later, I probably still wouldn't have bothered to ask him. Cold and aloof? I don't remember Dad being cold and aloof. Exactly. It's always the same old story with you, Ed. You were always Dad's favourite. He always mm -hmm. spent more time with you, did more with you, spent more money on you. <laughs> I'll never play favourites with my kids. <laughs> no, you just won't spend much time with either of them, full stop. <laughs> I knew there was a reason why we don't spend much time together. Thanks for reminding me. Harry, look, let's be nice. For Mum's sake. You are kidding! Yeah, you're joking, aren't you, Gran? Yeah, good one, Gran. Oh, no, isn't it a marvellous surprise? The least I could do is let you stay here. I could have given you my room, but I didn't want you to miss out on the pleasures of our little home. Harry, do something. Oh, do do? Isn't this the bungalow you and Dad used to live in before you built the big house? It's so old. Oh, I know, dear. It holds such wonderful memories. Mm. Your father and I had our honeymoon in here, you know. Really? It was our little love nest. Oh. Nights of splendor. Oh, oh, no. Way too much information. Right, we have to sleep.
teeth in there. Yuck. You should be fun, eh, Harry? <laughs> but Harry, this is absolutely ridiculous. Look, just think of the inheritance, then. It's only a few nights. I am not staying here, inheritance or not. I'm not staying in the same room as Campbell. You never know what I'll catch. Oh, shh, shh, shh. <clears throat> Oh, Mum. <laughs> oh, I know what you're going to say, dear, but really, it's fine. It's rather a sacred place for me. I'm a little concerned that the kiddies may break something, but I'm willing to take that risk for you, dear. Mum, you, you don't think it's a bit squeezy for, like, five of us? Oh, exactly. Oh, no, 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 no. At Edgewood, I've arranged for you to sleep in the butler's room. I'm sorry, dear. What? <laughs> Mum, obviously I'm disappointed. <gasps> But I'll cope. Oh. Mum? Mum, yes, if it's sort of like a, a, a memorial to Dad, then oh, yes. shouldn't we just leave it that way? Yeah. I want you, sweet. But really, I want you to stay here. It's all a part of why I asked you to come. See, she oh. does remember asking oh, us. I can't believe this. Oh, oh, oh. get to make new friends every day because you can't remember your old ones. Oh, and you're now. Don't wear out before you do. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about extended warranty because, hey, you'll be dead before you can use it. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Yes, but what the heck? I've had a full oh. life. What do they say? Only the good die young. So what does that make us think? Whoops, I can hear my telephone going. Must be something I want to chat to me. Mind you, I do turn my hearing aid off when you get those ones that talk non-stop selective hearing. A granny with ADD. Oh. <laughs> well, that was Ethel. She's a good neighbour. If I can't remember what I've been doing, she always reminds me. But her tongue is so fast she could whisk an egg with a... T <laughs> yeah, or whipped cream. <laughs> oh, but Ethel's right, though. It's a treat to have my boys at home again. Oh, and you and the children, of course, dear. All staying in my little bunk. I gave up Noosa for this. Mm. I know. Aren't you glad? Now put a smile on your face, dear. That's an inexpensive way to improve your looks. <laughs> Come along, Edward. I'll show you something. <laughs> Come along, Come along. <laughs> this is all part of her plan to make our lives miserable. Well, she's too late. We already are.
bed no matter how you go to school. Oh, what is that horrendous smell? Oh, oh, come in. Madame would like you to know that breakfast will be served shortly. Oh, oh, yes, I'm starving. Those baked beans for dinner last night didn't fill me up. Well, they filled you up with something, and all I can say is nobody light a match or the whole place is going to blow. And as for you, Harry, your snoring was so loud, I thought there was a semi-trailer idling outside. Now I remember why we don't sleep together anymore. Oh, and I thought it was because you didn't want to shock me with how bad you look in the mornings. Oh, is it morning already? I had this weird dream we were driving in a semi all night with a gas leak. <laughs> what? Come on. So, uh, what's for breakfast? Ah, uh, baked beans and sausages, sir. Oh, what's with the baked beans? Ah, uh, madam has a room full of them. She has them delivered weekly to keep up her stocks. For the war. <laughs> what war? some earplugs and somebody please remind me to take some sleeping tablets tonight. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. I'm not into drugs. Well, as long as you don't have to take a laxative as well. Oh, that could be disastrous. Looks like a good day out there, Mum. Oh, just the fact that I wake up every morning means it's a good day, dear. Then I see Grand. Oh. Are they expensive? Oh, yes, dear. Your grandfather always bought me the best of everything. I wish I could say the same. I have quite a collection, but I only wear a few. <sighs> Did you buy that safe I was talking to you about, Mum, to put your jewels in? Oh, things aren't safe in a safe, dear. Why, that's the first place a burglar will look. No, your old mother is smarter than that. Yes. They're a lovely colour, Gran. My favourite. Mm. What sort of stones are they? Oh, they're emeralds, darling. Wow, I love expensive jewellery. A oh, dear, dear. Yeah. Well, let's hope you marry someone rich. Yeah. Mum, why are you all dressed up? A church, of course. Uh, it is Sunday, isn't it? Yes, Gran. And tomorrow's Monday, then Tuesday, then Christmas when you're going to give us something really special. That's right, dear. Oh, we don't have to go to church, do we, Dad? Campbell, it won't kill you. You know, I used to go to church every Sunday when I was a kid. Oh, yes. It won't do me any good either, then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Harold. We'll all have a lovely walk to church. Remember we used to walk to church every Sunday with your father? Oh, he was a good man. He brought you boys up well. My memories are a little different to that, Mum. Well, you remember that, don't you, Edward? Uh, where is Edward? <laughs> Probably still sleeping in. He always was lazy, everything handed to him on a silver platter. You boys both helped with all the chores around the house. Your father always commented on what good boys you both were. Yeah. Well, good morning all. Did we oh, sleep well? Yes. Morning, Look Mum. at you, all clean and showered. I still can't understand why you don't have a wife. You scrub up so well. Yes, Mum. Oh, well, dear. Chin up. Oh, remember to keep your nose at a friendly level, dear. It's a lovely day. Thanks, Mum. Oh, well, I've had my jog, I'm showered and refreshed, and now I am starving. What's for breakfast? Oh, baked beans and sausages. Oh. Have as much as you want. There's plenty more where they came oh, from. Oh, no, Lily Campbell has a very bad reaction to baked beans. Well, does he? 
say that. Yeah. Oh, what a shame. I have such a store of them as well. Uh, mm, breakfast oh. is served, madam. We'll have to take baked beans off the menu after this, Arnold. It's oh. filler, madam. And that will change the entire menu for the next four days. Oh, well, we'll see what else is on special at Woolies. And maybe tins of spaghetti. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, well, once more under the breach, dear friends, let us go and do battle with the dreaded baked bean, hmm? Uh, Harold, uh, just a minute, dear, I want to talk to you. I've got something to show you, dear. I was in your father's study the other day, and look what I found. I haven't seen this photo for 20 years. Look at you, standing there in your cricket uniform next to your father, all of twelve, you must have been. Yeah, my first year in junior cricket. Yes. And look at the back, dear, look at the back. Me and Harold, his first game made me proud. What a lovely memory, hey? He never told me that. Oh, you know your father. He did find it hard to express himself. But he was a passionate man. The war affected him. The war affected many men. But he loved you dearly, Harold. He just didn't know how to show it. <laughs> I find that hard to believe, Mum. There was always something I was doing wrong. I, it was always my fault. It, he was never a... missed one of your games, you know. He always said that you had great potential. <laughs> I never saw Dad as being proud of me. Oh, but he was, dear. Whenever he talked to his friends about you, his face, it would just light up. You know, it's funny about memories. If you're not careful, it's the negative ones that tend to stand out more. Well, come along then, dear. Why don't we have some breakfast and then off to the good house, as your father would always say. Ooh. Good day, Phil. Good morning for a game of cards, eh? Good morning, Mr. Baker. Mr. Johnston, you have the wrong morning again. Today is Sunday. Mrs. Harris and her family are at church. Oh, I knew we got dressed up for something, Norman. Your card game with Mrs. Harris is on Tuesday. Tuesday, like it has been for the last ten years. Today is Sunday. Day. That's right, Harsh. Do us no good playing cards on a Sunday. Well, no, Norman. Me mother would roll over in her grave. I remember when I was a youngster, I rode my bike on a Sunday once. She gave me such a spank and I couldn't sit down for a week. You think that was bad? Well, I Excuse remember. Excuse me, we... sirs, but the service will have already started. Don't want to be late, Harsh. No, Norman. That wouldn't look good at all. Bit like you're here. <laughs> Should have combed it, eh? That's a bit hard, Norman, when most of it's in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Best we get off to church then, eh? Hey? Uh, Philip, we will see you on Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday. Very good. See you, Phil. Tuesday. Tuesday! <laughs> Don't forget. Well, I heard about the fella you've been dancing. 
dancing with all over the neighborhood. So why didn't you ask me, baby? Or didn't you think I could? that? I even believe that story about a talking donkey. I mean, who ever heard a donkey speak? Well, you're speaking right now, aren't you? <laughs> Funny Fleur. You mean you actually had your disc van off long enough to hear something, Campbell? The Bible is full of wonderful, amazing true stories, Rosella. <laughs> it's Campbell, Gran. Oh. But you can't expect me to believe that a donkey spoke to that Balaam dude. Well, when whether it's true, will I? What if Balaam went to hell? Oh, well, then you can ask him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh uh, I'm sorry, that was a little naughty of me. <laughs> but I can't understand why you find it so hard to believe. Your grandfather and I always had a strong faith in God and the Bible. Well, you remember, every Sunday your father, or every day your father would read you Bible stories around the dinner table. Yes. Well, we all travel down different roads, Lily, each to his own. Mm. Yes, but will the road you're on get you to God's place? If there is a God, Gran. Oh, of course there is, dear. Creation is not an accident and neither are you. Look at you, how pretty you are. It's not an accident that you are here. God knew you before the world began. Really? Yes, dear. Gran? Yes? Have you ever seen the cat use the kitty litter? Oh, thank you for bringing that up right now, Campbell. No, Tom never uses it while I'm around. He's just like a gentleman. And Philip cleans it regularly, don't you, Arnold? <laughs> It's Philip, madam. Philip. Uh, didn't I just say that? And speaking of Tom, where is he? He's not in his chair. Oh, Graham? Um, oh. Madam, I put him outside for some fresh air. 
Well, don't leave him out too long, Philip. I don't want him catching a cold at his age. Yeah, Philip. You don't want the cat to get all stuffed up. <laughs> uh, excuse me, madam, but yes. the baskets are ready for the Sunday picnic. Oh, what picnic? Yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, remember, boys, every Sunday after church, we'd have a picnic with your father. I've arranged one together for old time's sake. Yeah, good oh. old dad. I remember he used to love putting the top down the old convertible and taking for some drive through the park. <laughs> hey, Harry, he used to love giving us a good time. He did? Yeah, yeah. Harry, he did. You know, I'm beginning to think you've got, got selective memory. Edward, if I'd wanted a psychoanalysis, I would have asked for it. Oh, well, if we have to go on a picnic, then we'd better get changed. Come on, Fleur. Oh, yes, 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 that's a good idea. Now, remember, everyone, pot on some clean underwear in case we have a car accident on the way. <laughs> Well, come along, everyone. We'll have so much fun. What if we play some games? Um, Queenie, Queenie, who's got the ball? Is she big or is she small? <laughs> Did you hear what your mother just called me? And she probably said it without thinking. Like she does everything else. more I can take with Lil the dill. Oh, Mum, I find Gran really quite lovely and cute. Not mean and scheming like you've made her out to be. <laughs> she was so much fun today playing Skippy and hide and seek. <laughs> yeah, until she forgot to look for us and left us hiding for hours until it got dark. <laughs> really. <laughs> and how about when she introduced herself to that couple with the cute Chinese adopted baby? She goes, what are you going to do when it grows up and starts talking Chinese? <laughs> She's such a dag. So don't you want Gran to die anymore so we can get the money? Well, I want the money, but not at Gran's expense. Oh, duh, Fleur. Of course it's going to be at her expense. It's her money. Campbell. Fleur, your grandmother is a manipulative old lady, and the sooner you realise it, the better. Why, I could have been in Noosa right now, soaking up the sun in a gorgeous apartment. Instead, I'm here, in this little hovel, and for what? All because of the whim of a silly old lady. Yeah, silly Lily. <sighs> Bob, what's made you become so bitter and twisted? I beg your pardon? Well, Ed said I was the other day, and I thought, if I am, you must be. Oh. Well, maybe it has something to do with being married to you. Oh. Mum showed me a photograph of today of Dad and me. It's taken after a cricket match when I was 12. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. I always saw my father as disinterested. But on the back he'd written, Made me proud. <laughs> I never saw Dad as being proud of me. I always felt like I never quite made the grade and measured up or something. Edward was always good at everything. Mum said Dad saw great potential in me. Harry, are you talking to yourself? <laughs> well, I suppose I am if you're not listening. Oh, we've all got earplugs in, Harry. Oh, good night then. <clears throat> I know. Oh, I know. Yes, Ethel. I know. Oh, yes, I know. Well, let's hope that never happens to us, dear. And what's that? Oh, yes, dear. Knock on wood. Excuse me, Ethel. I think there's someone at the door. <laughs> Hello? Oh, that's odd. Hmm. Now, what was I doing? 
Oh yes, that's it. That's it. Hello dear, how are you dear? Ooh. Shopping, they said they'd be back at lunchtime. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. What is it that you listen to all the time? Well, Beatles? Elvis? Perry Como? <gasps> Catch a falling star and put it in your pocket. Never let it fade away. No, no, grand, no, 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 grand, 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 no, 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 here. Have a listen to this. It's techno dance music. Oh, lovely, dear. I just pop it on here. Is that it, dear? It's very pleasant, dear. It's very pleasant. That's no good, Hart. I mean, we haven't got many days left as it is. <laughs> we don't want to get eager and skip any. <laughs> no, no. Well, maybe we should go and make the most of this one while well, we've still got it. So what do you want to do? Oh. oh, I know. Why don't we go and have a game of cards with old Lil? No need to get narky about it, Philip. See, <laughs> wish. See you, Phil. You have a nice day. <sighs> Was that someone at the door, Philip? Just Mr. Baker and Mr. Johnson. They had the yes. wrong morning again, madam. I told them it's Tuesday. Today is Monday. So it's Monday, is it, Philip? Yes, ma'am. Has the greengrocer been yet? Not yet. He's probably running late with his pre-Christmas deliveries. Yes, thank you, Philip. Thank you, dear. Well, that certainly wasn't Elvis, Hines. <laughs> no. No, no, no. no it's no, Campbell no. Gran. But Elvis oh. does have a new song on the charts at the moment. It's oh. called A Little Less Conversation, A Little More Action, Please. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm still waiting for him to come to Australia for a concert. Would you like to come with me when he does? Gran, Elvis is dead. Oh, oh no! Oh, that's terrible! Oh, when did it happen? Well, what well, a tragedy! It happened ages ago. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, it must have been when my wireless was...
was playing up. I must get it fixed. Anyway, Gran, do you think after Christmas morning I'll be really, really happy? Well, that depends on what you base your happiness on, dear. Oh, money, of course. Uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. It will never bring you true happiness. Well, well I can live with false happiness. <laughs> but you don't need more money, dear. You have everything you need. A home, family, loving parents. Oh, since when? All I do is fight and argue all the time, and they're so oh. dull and boring. The sooner I lose them, the better. Before you were born, dear, your parents weren't as dull and boring as they are now. They got that way by working hard, paying your bills, washing your clothes, cooking you food, wiping your nose, changing your nappy, and listening to you talk about how cool you are. Oh, right. Well, I'm not going to get married and have kids. I'll keep it here and it's all to myself. Well, Rosella, if your parents never had children, chances are that you won't either. It's Campbell, Gran. Oh, there's the doorbell. Anyway, dear, I like you. You remind me of when I was young and stupid. <laughs> Ah, come on, the missus. Just oh. call me Rocky. Ah, oh. what do you think of this, eh? Oh, oh lovely fresh fruits and vegetables, oh, Rocky. I, lovely, dear. I tell you what, they're getting better every week. I yes. learn a little trick from a Greek friend of mine. Yes, sir. Pick them nice and fresh, nice squat of index. Oh, really? Nice. Couple of days are beautiful. That's <laughs> nice. Beautiful. But yes, you know what, dear. Mrs. I think we've got to stop eating this stuff. Get stuff with preservatives. We need all the help we can get, you know that? Uh, Rocky, did you know that Elvis Presley died? Yeah, uh, not just the dead, Mrs., but buried too, like my papa. Oh. But I tell like my stavula this, you know. When you bury, it's just the shell goes in the ground and the nut inside him goes straight to heaven. You like Elvis, huh? Oh yes. You dear, like me singing your little Elvis because you oh, see my yes, your kids, Stavula, my wife, you know, Pravula, Dimbula, yes, yes. Nick, Nikki, Christopher, Jack, George, yes, Jim, yes, dear. I love. Me singing to Elvis. Oh, How about you like some? Sure, they do. You listen to this. Love me tender, love me do, never let me go. Hey, you like it, Dad? Oh, very much. How about yes, you like yeah. it, this one? You ain't you nothing but your hound dog. Oh. Crying all the time. You ain't you nothing but your hound dog. Crying all the time. You ain't you never caught your rabbit. And you ain't no friend of mine. Hi, missus, you dance pretty good. Oh, thank you, Rocky. My grandson says the same thing. You always put a smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, well, one more smile, pretty soon the whole world be happy. Oh, yes. Hi, missus, you got your family over. Yes, Rocky. Die lucky have my mama like you. Oh. I love my mama, but you're the best of mama in the world. Oh. Those boys, die lucky have my mama like you. You make oh. them good boys. Oh, well, it's kind of you to say that, Rocky. But this is one mama who wishes she'd been a little quicker to understand their needs. What do you mean by that, missus? Oh, well, it's funny, Rocky. Children grow up in the same household, same parents, same history. Yet they can have very different ideas about their parents and what their parents think of them. Oh. My two boys had different feelings about their father. Yet he loved each of them exactly the same. I fear that Harold has allowed his father's faults to spoil and damage his view of life. Oh. I'm sorry it's taken me this long to realise it, Rocky, but this Christmas I'm going to be the mama that they really need. You know what I think, Mrs? Yeah? I think you're going to work it out. Oh. You're a smart woman. Oh, I teach you as well. sharp as a tech. Oh. <laughs> Anyhow, I've got to go finish my Christmas deliveries oh, or the oh, yes. <coughs> You get a crook on me. 
Look at me, missus. <coughs> oh, you all right, Rocky? <coughs> oh, dear. And I tell you what, when I give this devil a crook, she pack a pretty good a bunch. Oh, well then, bye-bye, Rocky. Enjoy your packed lunch. <laughs> oh, he's a lovely man. Oh, lovely man. Family, Philip? Relaxing in the back garden, madam. Oh, how lovely. Are they talking together? Well, I assume so, madam. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, Philip, have you seen my earrings? I can't find them anywhere. Where did I put them? Where do you normally keep them, madam? In my ears. <laughs> Yes, I know that, madam, but you must have taken them out and put them somewhere. Where did you put them? Well, didn't I just ask you that question? Where do you keep your jewels, madam? I hide them. Hmm. Yes, I know, but where do you hide them? Oh, well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be looking for them, would I? <laughs> well, I'll oh, keep a lookout for them. I know, I know. Hello, Philip. We're here for our card game. See you, Phil. I like him. Mm. Well... It was nice not having baked beans for breakfast and lunch. Yeah, well, only two more sleeps and maybe we'll all be able to get some without a gas mask tonight. Mm. Actually, this is not my idea of relaxation. I feel really, really tense tonight. But Bob needs a good holiday. Do you want to take her? No <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, only two more days and then freedom. Yeah, riches and wealth. I'll never have to work. Yeah, a new wardrobe of clothing. Water wall sound system. Well, travel. <gasps> and women. Campbell, you're too young to be thinking about things like that. Anyway, you're so feral, who'd have you? <laughs> Fleur, don't talk like that to your brother. Oh, why not? You and Dad always speak to each other like that. It's normal, isn't it? Fleur! Harry, are you just going to sit there? Say something. Yes. I hope Gran likes the presents we got her. I mean, they'll probably be really scabby compared to the ones she's giving us. Isn't it funny how Gwen doesn't live a rich lifestyle? Oh, fancy stocking up with baked beans when she could be having lobster and caviar, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Campbell, your grandmother and grandfather never flaunted their money. A sensible lifestyle, they called it. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. I say if you've got it, flaunt it. Makes life worth living and your friends jealous. <laughs> So what did the old geezer do for a job to make him so rich? Campbell. Old geezer? Oh, you know, granddad, Mr Scrooge. Hello, hello. Oh. Well, we're up to relaxing, are we? Well, when I was young, we didn't have much time for relaxing. Now we worked from dawn to dusk, we did, just to make ends meet, and even then it was tough. But we had each other and the kids, old Donald and I. Gone are the days when family value is all important. Kids down the road used to call Donald an old geezer, but he was a good family man. He had common sense and decent family values. Why, well, he was polite too, just like your dad, Harold. He would always tip his hat for the ladies and open the doors for him. And if you ever walked down the street, he would put you on the inside to keep you safe from the traffic. He had decent moral courage, that man did. Do you know, whenever he heard the national anthem, he would always put his hat upon his heart. You know, he fought for that war, he did. Just like your dad, Harold. Without a thought except to do the best that they could. Why, well, he went hard for living too, you 
you know, and any extra he earned went straight towards you boys' future. Yep, he loved you boys. He was an old geezer just like my Donald. But thank God for them, I say. If kids today took more notice of old geezers, they'd be better off for it. Your Donald and Dad were pretty good mates, weren't they, Ethel? Why, of course they were. Your Dad and my Donald were always chatting about you boys and who was going to make the biggest impact on the future. He was always so proud of you boys. Kids today need all the help they can get. Money's not going to make them happy. They need to see people living and loving unselfishly. Thanks for that, Ethel. We tried our best. Well, I've heard the best thing you can do for your kids is to improve your marriage. <laughs> There's a bit of free counselling advice for you. Mm. If we'd wanted it, we would have asked. Oh, well, listen to you, Edward, in your posh English accent. It must have been lovely living in England. Why, Donald and I, when we... Why, there's my telephone again. It's funny how that tends to happen anyway. Ta-ta! Bye, Saved by the bell. Yeah. How did you like that trick? What'd you do? I got a number off Grayton's tally decks just for an emergency like this. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Seems like Ethel's gained a lot of wisdom over her years. Hmm. Something we could all use a bit more of. Hey. Then again, maybe not. Look, I thought we'd take Mum out for dinner tonight. There's a smorgasbord place down the road and I thought we'd take her out for a treat, so thanks for having us. OK, Ed, your shout. <laughs> Not a problem, Harry, if you can't afford it. Oh, at least we'll get a decent meal for a change. No canned food. All right. I'll tell the butler not to worry about dinner. Good. Hey, speaking of the butler, have any of you noticed anything strange about Philip? Only that he pretends the cat's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I walked in him the other day rifling through Mum's cupboards. Covered up really well. Said he was looking for something she'd lost, but I really don't know. Maybe I'm just being too suspicious. Well, now that you say it, Uncle Ed, I walked in on this morning in the kitchen while you were all out shopping. He seemed really shocked to see me. Uh, Want to know what he was doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he was up on a step ladder looking above the kitchen dresser. He said he was doing a bit of spring cleaning for Grant. Uh, oh, he's up to something for sure because it's not spring, it's summer. Oh, oh. Fleur, let's not jump to conclusions. Oh, what if he knows about Grant's jewellery collection? What if he steals it? Oh, no, I've already told all my friends about it. Campbell, what if I don't get anything? This is so terrible. They're all going to laugh Fleur, at me. Fleur, look at me. Look at me, Fleur, look at me. <laughs> We've still got the house. That's going to be worth a packet when we sell it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, something smells fishy around here. Yeah, the butler's breath. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I saw him eating the tuna that Gren thinks he gives to the cat. Really? Oh, oh, I wouldn't be surprised if he uses the kitty litter as well. Oh, <laughs> Can <I guess>? Guess. <laughs> Why does he keep this up? No idea. Um, do you know what we're actually doing? <laughs> we're laughing together. <laughs> Wonders will never cease, eh? board full of mouth-watering food and not a baked bin in sight. That was heaven. Yeah, but how embarrassing was Gran, though? Oh, oh yeah. Going around to complete strangers' tables telling them not to eat too much just so there's plenty to go around. <laughs> and how about when the desserts came out? Gross. Oh, yeah. oh, I must have missed that one. What did she do? Oh. Well, she didn't want us to miss out on the pavlova, so she took her false teeth out and put it in it. Oh. <laughs> Then she quickly run back to our table to get us. Oh, you should have seen the crowd gathering. Oh, oh. did you eat it? No. But Gran sure got a tea stuck into it. Oh. <laughs> you never know what Gran's going to do next. Oh. oh, well, there's only two more nights to put up with her. Mm. Anyway, oh. I'm exhausted. You know, I've been thinking about what Ethel said today, about Dad. I'm beginning to wonder if my memories of Dad haven't been poisoned. Maybe he was a good man, but then, if he really did love me and was proud of me, why do I feel so neglected, so overlooked, so alone? Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Oh, that's right. Earplugs in.
I'll get the phone, madam. Good morning, Harris residents. Mate! <laughs> yeah! G'day! How going? Fair income. Really? <laughs> yeah, no? Got time to chew the fat a bit? Yeah, no, she's apples, mate. She's apples, yeah. <laughs> sure do miss me flannies and me hard yakkers. <laughs> Got to dress up in this big bag of fruit every day and speaking with a plum in me mouth sure is giving me the irrits. But I can't complain, mate. Can't complain earning big bickies. And <laughs> anyway, sure beats sheep, dags and blowies, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, just biding my time, mate. Bide my time till I find out where she's hiding her jewels. When I do, shoot through like a Bondi tram, mate. Yeah. Well, she was telling me the other day how her William bought her an expensive piece of jewellery every anniversary. And from what I can gather, they were married about 25 years before he was cactus, so there ought to be a pile stashed around here somewhere. You know how these old codgers don't trust banks and the like? Always hoarding their money and valuables in the home somewhere. <laughs> in case of a war. <laughs> Hang on a tick, mate. Philip! Oh, excuse me, madam. The phone call is for me. Do you mind if I take it? No, no, that's quite all right, Philip, but I was just wondering, have you seen my reading glasses? I've been looking for them all morning. Uh, madam, you're wearing them? Oh, so I am. And now what was I doing? You were looking for your glasses, madam. That's right. Thank you, dear. Now, where are they? Where are they? The old chooks are sang a sort of a picnic, mate, I reckon. Oh, but she's harmless. Can't complain. Got a roof over my head. Oh, get this. She's got this stuff cap that she thinks is real. I have to keep up the pretense to keep her happy. Oh, she goes on and on about how precious the darn thing is. Sure am sick of eating tuna. <laughs> and family, they're all from Melbourne. Bunch of bludgers they are. Reckon I'm a right drongo. Yeah. Oh, noises are done door on a storm too. So, what have you been up to, mate? It's flat out like a lizard drinking, I suppose, yeah? Crikey. There's a doorbell. Better go and do me job. Listen. I'll be in touch when I know any more, mate. OK? Cheers. <laughs> G'day, Phil. Come in, sirs. So have we got the right day, have we? Yes, sirs. <laughs> Tuesday morning. I'll let Miss Harris know you're here. Please take a seat. Hey, Phil, you do to loosen up a bit, you know. You're as stiff as a board. Yeah, just like the cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple of ankle biters. What are you youngins doing, eh? What, no school today? No, we're on holidays. It's Christmas tomorrow. Is it? Did you know that half? Oh, yes, Norman. Oh. Joe, young lady. Oh, oh. Are you doing well at school? Yes, straight A's. <laughs> oh, good. What does she mean by that, Norman? <laughs> She's writing her A's straight. Oh! <laughs> good! Well done. Oh, what sort of marks are you getting then? Straight A's? Yes, I know that, dear. <laughs> this one's a bit slow, Norman. <laughs> No, you don't understand. How about you, young fella? Getting up to all sorts of mischief, eh? Hey, 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 hey. Come back, have a seat. Oh, will he be all right? Oh, will he be all right? It happens all the time, don't worry. Remember when we were young hives? Lizards in the girls' desks? Oh, and pea shooting from the back row. Fingernails across the slate board. And molasses in the inkwells. How about scaring the other kids' horses home? Oh, <laughs> oh those were the days, oh, Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what yeah, about but... you, young fella? You must get yourself a, into some strife, eh? Well, I've, 
Been sent to time out a couple of times. Time out? What's that? Well, you get sent to a room and you've got to wait for, till the teacher decides you can come back. And they call that punishment? Well, it's pretty boring. I mean, you don't have a computer or anything in front of you. You've just got to sit there. Did you hear that, Hart? Punishment by time out. Sounds like peace and quiet to me. Yep. Don't worry, lad. When you get married, you'll appreciate time out. <laughs> My word. Not like when we were at school, though, eh, Norman? Oh, no, I remember real discipline. Why, that was the old yardstick across the backside. I mean, if you're lucky enough, you had enough time to put a newspaper down your pants. Well, you were lucky to have the yardstick. We got the cane. That, that was worse, especially on the cold mornings. You'd have red welts across your hands and your fingers were so swollen you couldn't hold a pen. The cane? Oh, we dreamt of having the cane we did across our hands. We were made to kneel in the corner on two hard peas until our knees bled, with a dunce's hat on and our hands tied behind our backs with barbed wire. Luxury! We had to stand out on a frozen quadrangle for three hours with no shoes on. Then we had to stand in the freezing cold until the headmaster came and gave us a beating on the soles of our feet for 25 minutes with a cricket stump. Cricket stump? Absolute luxury, that is. I remember real discipline. We got dragged into the principal's office, taken back out, strung up at a flagpole by our thumbs for three days without food or water. Then they would come along with the Caddo nine tails and flog our bare backside until, until bottom was shredded. And then they would rub salt into the wounds. And that was on a good day. That, that Norman was a good day. We got dragged out onto a gravel road and tied behind a horse and cart and then dragged at full speed across rocks and cattle grids till we were nearly torn in two. Then, just to make sure we understood the punishment, the groundskeeper would ride behind us on horseback, tailgating us. Then they'd tie us to wooden stakes in the ground over a jumping jack's nest in the hot sun until we shriveled up like raisins. And you try telling the kids of today. And they I won't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Excuse me, sirs. I found Mrs. Harris. <laughs> she's having a cup of tea with Miss Ethel and she's forgotten you were coming. Oh, that'd be right, Norman. We finally get the right day and Lil forgets about us. Yes. She did ask me to invite you back around five o'clock for Christmas drinks with the family. Did she? Yes. Oh. oh we better synchronise watches, Hars. Want to make sure we arrive back on time. Well, maybe we should just wait out on the porch, Norman. <laughs> In case we forget to come back. Uh, good idea, Hars. Good idea. <laughs> Harold, a traditional family Christmas. I wish your father were here. Remember when you were little, he used to dress up as Father Christmas? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I wish I hadn't left these lights till the last minute, Mum. They're all tangled up. I only found them in the attic last night, <coughs> along with some other things. I found you can tell a lot about a man by the way he handles rainy days, screaming children, and tangled Christmas <clears throat> lights. Your father was a patient man. Oh, yes. What were you doing in the attic, Mum? Oh, I couldn't sleep. I often wander up into the attic at night, going through boxes of memories, photos and letters I've kept... Pictures that you boys drew. Look at this one that you drew for your father. And look what you wrote on it. Oh, yes. Look, dear, look. <laughs> to the best daddy in the world, thank you for being my daddy and 
Thank you for my new bike. I always love you. Harry. I love that bike. It made me feel special. Mum? Mum, why didn't Dad give me a new car when I graduated, like Edward? The Bible was more precious to your father than a new car, dear. He lived his life out of that Bible and he wanted you to as well. Every night he'd sit in his chair with it opened up on his lap and I'd sit across from him and look at him and feel so safe and secure and loved. He was my knight in shining armour. But, but Edward got the car. What made him more worthy of it than me? I think you read your father's heart wrong, dear. Look, darling, your father wasn't a man of many words. He had a lot of pain in his life that he didn't want to talk about. And perhaps that made him seem distant and aloof. Or perhaps even a little grumpy sometimes. Oh, but he had a heart of gold. Yeah. And look what else I found. These two little stars with your names on them. Look here, dear. Looky, looky, looky. Hey, I remember those stars. Oh, yes, dear. Dad look. used to hang them on the Christmas tree at exactly the same level so That's that we'd know right. he loved us yes. both equally. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hey, Harry, remember, we each used to sneak in when no one else was around up our own style, a little bit higher up. <laughs> Good times. Oh, you boys were competitive, but you loved each other. Yes. <sighs> oh, put on some music, would you, Heinz? Christmas music, dear, none of that dance prance. Oh. Hey, Grant, you've got the Blues Brothers CD. <laughs> oh, do I, dear? Oh, I don't remember buying that. That's not unusual, is it? <sighs> Happy birthday to you! It's Christmas. <gasps> and a happy new year! <sighs> Come in, sirs. Don't mind if we do, Phil. It's getting a bit chilly out there on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, stop right there! Don't move! Look up! Look up! Why is there parsley hanging from your chandelier? <laughs> Well, in America they have mistletoe, but I didn't have any. Now you're supposed to kiss under it. It's tradition. <laughs> Not him! Me! Me! me. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you, dear. Oh, thank goodness for that. Thank you, dear. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Barb and Fleur. It's very kind of you, and very unlike you. Oh, get that, would you, Heinz? We'll get it, Lil. Oh. Hello! Oh, oh, stop right there, Ethel! Don't move! Stop right there! Come on, Harvey and Norman, get a move on! Now's your chance! Quickly! Merry Christmas, Ethel! Ethel. Oh. And the voice too, I hope. Oh, we haven't done that to somebody in quite some time, have we? Uh, no, Norman. Looks like our luck could be changing. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Harris. Oh, oh, hello, Barry. Well, that's me finished. Christmas Eve, just like I promised. Oh, thank you, Barry. You're a wonderful man. Well, I could have had this finished earlier if you wanted me to. I mean, I could have had this finished two weeks ago, Mrs. Harris. Really? I thought you were extremely busy, like just fitting it in. Oh, no, ma'am. Mrs. Harris wanted me to do it right at this time, in fact. She specifically asked me to finish on Christmas Eve. Isn't that right, Mrs. Harris? Really? Uh, would anyone like a pot of tea, please? Oh, yes, please. Oh. One, thank you. Well, Mrs. Harris, I've got some cleaning up to do, and I'll just pack up my gear oh, and that's yes. me away. Don't hesitate to sing as you work, Barry. Yes, you know Mrs. my favourite. I know your favourite, Mrs. Harris. Mum, now why did you it's ask Barry to... It's been having Barry here. Whenever he's here, there's such a peace in the house. He's got a wonderful voice. Oh. 
Sometimes at night I'd lie awake Longing inside For my father's embrace Sometimes at night I wander downstairs And pray he'd return But no one was there Oh, how I cried, a child all alone, waiting for him to come home. My father's chair sits in an empty room. My father's chair covered with sheets of gold. My father's chair. Sometimes at night I sit all alone Drifting asleep In a chair of my own When sweet sleepy eyes Peer down from the hall Frightened by dreams They cannot recall Holding them close, calming their fears, praying they always will see my father's chair sits in a loving room. My father's chair, no matter what I do, my father's chair. Well, 
I'm for another drink. Anybody else for a top up? Oh. Oh. Yes. So, so do you guys have anything to do with Harvey Norman? Yes, of course we do. I'm Harvey and he's Norman. <laughs> well, I don't have a grandfather anymore, so I'm available to be adopted as a grandson. Wasn't that a lovely night? Lots of drinks and nibblies and good company. Oh, your father loves nights like this. I miss him so much, Harold. Barry's song. It was meant for me, wasn't it, Mum? I'd say so, dear. My dad was a good man, wasn't he? Oh, yes, dear, he was. He really did love me, didn't he? Oh, yes, dear, he did. He did. Dad was always here. More than I have been for my kids. What was I thinking? I've been so selfish. I have let one disappointment overshadow all the good stuff he did, haven't I, Mum? Yes, you have, dear. But tomorrow morning, I have a gift for you that may take away all those years of disappointment. It's okay, Mum. The, the inheritance just just doesn't seem to matter anymore. But that's not what I'm talking about. Good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. I'm starting to realise I, I perceive things about Dad that just weren't true. Good for you, Harry. Bob, I think he really did love me. The way he loved Ed and Mum. Oh, that's nice. Bob, Ethel's right. We do need to improve our marriage. So one talk with Ethel and... Shh. So one talk with Ethel and the penny finally drops. I've been telling you that for years. But you would never listen, Harry. It's always been about your needs. It's always been about you. Well, well, you haven't been... Well, you haven't been exactly nice. That's because I've had nothing nice to respond nicely to. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and change. Yeah, yeah. Bob, how did it get this bad between us? Look, Harry, I've just been hanging in there these last few years till the kids grow up and leave home. You know. 
never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. Oh, for goodness sake. There's no tenderness like before in your fingertips. Oh, I wonder why. You're trying hard not to show it. No, I'm not. But baby, baby, I know it. You've lost that loving feeling. Whoa, that loving feeling. You. Baby, baby, I'll get down on my knees to you. agree to give it a shot? Go on, Mum. Do it for Dad. Yeah, go on, Mum. Oh, all right, all right. But now can we all get some sleep? Yeah. Hey, everyone, it's Christmas. Come on, let's go. Fleur, it's the beginning of our new life. Yeah. We're going to get the money. We're, We're going to get, get some money. presents. We're, We're going to get, get some presents. presents. We're gonna get some presents. We're gonna get some presents. Shh! Let them hear us. Merry Christmas, everyone! And I wonder what Santa Claus has brought you. Why, I remember when I was young, we used to get a lot of at Christmas. But mind you, that was a real treat. Because my telephone is funny. I don't know what's doing stuff. And if you have a Merry Christmas, God bless you all. You will owe me for that. A good one, Rosella. <laughs> oh, oh, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Grand. Dear. Merry, <laughs> Merry Christmas, Grand. Merry Christmas, dear. Good Merry morning. Christmas. Merry Christmas. I've Mom. been up since the crack of dawn. I was so full of excitement I couldn't sleep. Oh, Grand, oh, the oh, presents oh. we got you aren't that great. Oh, that's all right, dear. It's better to give than to receive, and I've got lots to give. Oh, well, come on, Grand, let's go for it. Oh, just a moment, dear. We don't want Edward to miss out. Don't we? Edward! Edward! Coming! Oh, good. <laughs> Excuse me, madam, but breakfast is ready when you are. Won't you join us, Philip? Oh, thank you, but no thank you. I do have things to do, and I really wouldn't want to spoil your family time. Oh, you wouldn't do that, Philip. Children, come and sit up the front. 
on, come along, come on, come and sit here, please. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Merry Christmas, <laughs> Mum. Oh, thank you, Edward, dear. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Merry Christmas son. son. Merry Christmas, Harry. Hi, Ed. Oh, well, this is the time of the year where we remember what Christmas is all about, don't we? Mm -hmm. I want to share something very important with you all. Do you know that when God gave us Jesus Christ, he gave us the most wonderful gift? Yeah, we know, Grand. But for thousands of years, people have acted like God hasn't given them anything. They have never appreciated the love of the Father. So they live their lives like that, never understanding the Father's gift. Why, some people so underestimate it that they don't even bother to receive it at all. They don't realise how wonderful that gift is. Isn't that right, Harold? And Harold, I'd first like to give you my gift, dear. Actually, this is the second time this gift has been given. But this time I hope you'll see how valuable it really is. Quick. It's Dad's Bible, the one he gave me. That's right, dear. I didn't realise that you hadn't taken it. <laughs> no, I, I shoved it up in the attic with all the other stuff I didn't need when I left home. I only found it last month, and it saddened my heart to know it had been sitting in the attic for 20 years, and I didn't know. Well, this time I will take it, Mum. But this time, you need to look inside it, Harold. What's this? Read it, Harold. Yeah, read it, Dad. <sighs> to my dearly loved son, Harold. Today I sat with your mother and watched my boy become a man. You have graduated and the rest of your life stretches out in front of you. I know I'm not good at expressing my feelings, I suppose it's the way I was raised, but I don't want this day to pass before I put into words some of my thoughts. How will you manage life? Who will you marry? Will you love your wife as I have loved your mother? Will you love God all the days of your life? The most important and valuable asset that my father gave me has been a faith in God that has guided and guarded me in my most difficult moments. I want you to have the Bible my father gave to me. Let its truth guide you and speak to you all the days of your life. And I know all will be well. With love from your dad. P.S. Turn to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. A check for $100,000? Yes. Look at the date and look at the handwriting. 25th of December 1980. Dad wrote this. Oh. Here's your prize because you're the best. Buy a car and bank the rest. Oh. All these years, Mum. I, I didn't know. I was upset, angry. I, oh, I can't believe I've wasted my life believing something that wasn't true. Believing that Dad just didn't love me or, or was trying to teach me a lesson or something. Mum, Mum, I, I didn't understand. I'm so sorry. Everyone, I, I'm sorry. Ed... Can you believe this? Well, it certainly explains a lot, Harry. I just didn't know. I didn't know either, dear. I didn't understand. I thought you had received the money. If I had known more about your father's finances, I would have realised. But don't worry, dear. I'm going to write you another check. Oh, Mum, just knowing this was here 
It's changed everything. I, I, I don't need another check. But don't let that stop you from writing another one. Yeah. I won't, but... But I'm so glad you found something that's so much more valuable, Harold. But all these wasted years, Mum. But, dear, you still have today and the rest of your life. Live one day at a time. Remember, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift, and that's why we call it the present. Yeah, I remember Dad used to say that. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, the present. Yeah. Now can we open ours? Oh, yes, just a moment, Campbell and Fleur. I want to give you my special ones. Here they are. Oh, it's very exciting, isn't it, dear? There you go, there you go. It's, it's a... a Bible. Quick, Fleur, open it. It's probably got a big, huge check in it. Oh, yeah. I want you to read your Bibles every night so you can begin to understand the wonderful gift the Heavenly Father has for you. And when you both turn 25, I have made arrangements for you both to receive a substantial amount of money. Oh, 25? It's what your grandfather would have wanted. To take care of his family. And do you know what else? What? what? Gran? What? Gran, Gran, what? Gran, 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 what? What? What, dear? You were going to tell us something else, Gran. Yeah. It was I did? Yes. Oh, yes. Edward and Harold, you will both have shared control of all my assets in the future, and I know you'll do your father proud. He loved you both very, very much. He used to look for the gold in everyone, and he'd usually find it too. Even in you, Bob. <laughs> and Bob you to be given my precious Tom when I can no longer look after him. I don't want that stinky, smelly old Bob. thing and keep your words soft and tender, Bob, for one day you may have to eat them. Well, come along, everyone. Why don't we all get into the rest of the presents? Come yes. along, and let's make a move. Come on. Oh. Come on, Perry. Let's check it out. Oh, be careful, boys. Be careful. All I want to do is open the rest of the presents. The suspense is killing me. It can't be Tom. He's sleeping peacefully on his chair. Maybe it's a burglar. Oh, oh no. I've got something to protect Oh, it. yes. Do, dear. Do. Here's oh. a culprit. We found him in the attic. Tripped over some paint cans that Barry had left there. What on earth were you doing in the attic, Arnold? It's Phil. Madam... <laughs> Well, he's obviously been up to no good, Mum. There were paint cans and boxes tipped all over the place, or did you do that? No, no, I'm always careful to put everything back in its proper place. Oh, I bet you're after Gran's jewellery collection, weren't you? Did you find it? Mum, I thought I told you to put that in a safe place. Yeah, they're part of my, I mean, our inheritance. Oh, don't fret, Pet. They're in a safe place, I think. We should call the police, Mum. Yeah. Oh, well, I, uh, I don't think that's necessary. No, 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 not on Christmas Day. We don't want to bother them. Mm. Nothing's been stolen. Well, I think we need to show the butler the door then, yeah. Mum. Oh, not now, Harold. He's seen it many times before. <laughs> no, I'm afraid your services are no longer required, Philip. You've betrayed my trust. But, Madam... That would leave me with nowhere to go at such short notice. You mean you're up the river without a paddle? Well, then you'd better thumb a lift to the back of back where all your shifty mates are, hey? Sorry, Mrs. Harris. Well, not as sorry as you'll be if you ever come back. It's all right, boys. It's all right. I was getting carried away. Don't start with your regrets now, Philip. I liked you. 
I wanted to give you a chance. Tom, Tom and I will miss you. Well, that's the same as ours, so I'm not going to regret miss, missing that cat. <sighs> yes, I'm sure it is. Yeah, and a fishy taste out of your mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry to see you go. Oh, don't be nice to him, Gran. He tried to rip you off. He's lucky we don't call the police. Don't worry. I'll make sure he gets his belongings and leaves. Come on, you. Mum, are you all right? Oh, yes, dear. It is a horrible, horrible shock. Oh, Gran, now is it time to open the presents? You're killing me. Oh, of course, dear. Oh, come along, everyone. Let's not let this nasty incident with Philip affect our Christmas yeah. together. We've got so much to do, haven't we? Come along, then. Come on. <sighs> and thankfully, Arnold's already put the turkey in the weeber. So it's just a matter of switching it on, isn't it? Mum, what's a weeber? <sighs> Are you going to be all right for a few days? Yes, yes, I'll be fine. The housekeeper's coming in tomorrow and Ethel will keep an eye on me. Yes, I don't doubt Thank that. You, <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's me packed, Mum. Now, I've got to go back to Sydney for work for a couple of days. Yes, I'll dear. come back down and I'll help you find a new butler. Oh. And hopefully this time without a double life. Oh, thank you, Edward. You're a good boy. You help me find a butler and I'll help you find a wife. There yes, must be no. someone that sees in you what I see. That's Love is blind, no. Lily. Anyway, I've cleaned up the bungalow as best as I can. Yes, I know you have, dear. Don't worry, I'll go in after and fix it up. <laughs> well, you all have a lovely trip home and don't worry about me. I'll be fine. You take oh. care, Mum. Thank you, see dear. See you soon, Lily. Lovely to have you all. Oh, oh, just a moment. I forgot. I want to give you something to eat on your way home. I won't be long. I'll be with you in just a moment, Tom. Oh, where's the kitchen? Oh, oh <laughs> she's a worry. Don't take too long, eh, Ed? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be back soon. <laughs> Who'd have thought things would turn out like this, eh? Yeah. yeah, you can't help but wonder if there wasn't a master plan behind it all. Yeah. And we'll probably never know. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see a bit more of each other, Harry. Better be good, Ed. Yeah. What I want to know is, what is Gran going to do when she realises precious old Tom doesn't eat or pee? Oh. Maybe we should break the news to her. But she'll be so devastated. Oh, no, look, I think she'll take him to the vet and he'll give her the bad news. Look, he's a professional. Yeah. He'll let her down gently. Don't yeah. worry. It'll okay. be OK. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea, Bob. <laughs> Hello, Tom. I'm back again, dear. <laughs> Are you a good boy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Lily, you were going to the kitchen to find us something to eat. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, here you go, Yandia. Here you go. Lovely. Home brand Murray biscuits. <laughs> Delightful. Dear. Thanks for everything, Mum. Oh, you're welcome, dear. Oh, See you soon. It's wonderful See you soon, to have you here. <laughs> Don't leave it so it's long between nice. visits, yeah. will you, dear? We won't. We'll good. be back soon. Good boy. Good boy. See you, Gran. Bye-bye, Hans. See you, home. See you home. dear. Thanks for the best Christmas yes, ever, Gran. Blow. You're a lovely girl, aren't you? Yes, you are. Take care, Oh, bye-bye. See you bye, 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 Thank dear. you for having yes, us. Bye, oh, bye. I've left my handbag. Just a moment. Good, dear. Yes. Oh. Just... Ooh. Well, that's where all the Christmas pudding went. <laughs> Ooh. Ta-ta, dear. No good, dear. Well, there you have it. Mission completed. William would be so happy. Oh. Well, Tom, 
It looks like it's just you and me for a while, hey? Come along then, you dear old thing. Come and sit up on my lap. Oh, you're a good boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. Hey? Yes, you are. You see, I'm not such a silly lily after all. Ladies and gentlemen, would you show your appreciation just one more time for the Mudbrick Performing Arts Company, please. Thank you. The impact that parents have on children is lifelong. The impact that parents have on their kids affects every relationship that their children will experience for the rest of their life. Fact is that parents are not perfect people. They don't always express themselves perfectly. They don't always understand their own children's needs perfectly. Sometimes parents profoundly bless their kids by their uh, positive qualities and leave quite damaging marks because of lax, because of brokenness, and sometimes because of bad behaviour on their part. One of the most important healings that can ever take place in your life is to truly learn to love your parents for the good that was there and to be able to forgive them for the stuff that was not there. Not everybody figures that out in life and uh, the damage, the marks, follow them through every relationship for the rest of their life. It's one of the reasons why here at Mount Evelyn we run what we call recovery programs to give people an opportunity to go back and look at some of the influences that, that uh, parental background has had upon their life, uh, the, the way it's affecting their own parenting, their own marriages, and every area of their life. And it may be that watching this production tonight perhaps alerted you to the fact that maybe there's some unfinished business and that perhaps as a, a church we could maybe help you or support you at this time in your life and you could discover that life really could be better. As you leave tonight, if you're new to us, if you're here for the first time, we'd love to put in your hands a little introductory pack to some of the things that we do here at Mount Evelyn. On the inside, you'll find this little brochure about Care Force Recovery Ministries. I really would encourage you to have a look at it. it. There may be a course that we're running next year that could really help your life to be different. This thing about resolving the parental paradox 
the fact that parents do you good and they do you harm, resolving that parental paradox is so important that in this introductory pack, we've included a message that I spoke on this subject about a year ago. It's called Resolving the Parental Paradox. And if you're visiting us for the first time tonight, we'd love to give you this as a gift. It's in this little pack. And if you're not new to us tonight, but you'd like to have that CD, you could go to the tape table and they'd love to uh, make sure that one is ordered for you. If you're kind of uh, someone who's around Mount Evelyn tonight and you take one of these packs, we're going to run out of them. There's nearly a thousand people in the building tonight. And if everybody tried to take one of these, we would not have enough for our guests. So we'd ask you to make sure that these go to those who are here for the first time. And if you are someone who knows about our church, go to the uh, tape desk and order that CD. It would be a thrill to make it available to you. Let me say one other thing. You know, it's not just with regards to our earthly father that there can be misunderstandings and wounded feelings. All over the world, there are people who feel like God hasn't loved them very much in their life. All over the world, there are people who are angry at God, disappointed with God. They feel like he's somehow robbed them or gypped them or overlooked them in life. And it isn't true. It may well be you believe something about God that is totally and utterly false. In fact, every Christmas, we celebrate the fact that he has given you the most profound gift that can affect you in this life and for all eternity, the gift of his own son, Jesus. And it is possible that maybe every year you celebrate Christmas but never receive the gift. This church exists to help people in their journey towards understanding the Father heart of God, in understanding how profoundly you are loved by God and how profoundly he is seeking you and would like to touch your life with his love. This Christmas, we're going to be having again a Christmas Eve service, cunningly placed on December the 24th. <laughs> if you'd like to come back and join us uh, on the evening of, uh, on Christmas Eve, we have a, a service at six and a service at eight. Uh, Rocky the fruiterer is going to be uh, playing a role and Barry the painter will be there also. Why don't you come back and see how Lily and the whole thing finishes up on Christmas Eve and maybe take a step towards allowing God to explain his love to you and maybe help you understand how profoundly you are loved. Our uh, Mudbrick Performing Arts Company mu musicians and singers have just released their brand new CD with, with music of thanks and music of love written by our own singers and musicians. If you'd love a copy of this for your own use or maybe a, a, a late Christmas present for somebody, there's a CD table outside. They'd love to make one available for you and you can get one there. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming tonight. Without you, it would have been boring here this evening. <laughs> but because you came, it was a thrill. We have enjoyed serving you. And we trust that tonight has been a blessing, that you've enjoyed the night. And we hope to see you sometime in the new year. If you wake up one Sunday morning and think, I ought to go to church. Come and join us. We'd love to have you. God bless you. Have a wonderful year. Good night.